Hey y'all, this is Anna Alexander. Welcome back to the basement as we are returning to season three. This is episode six of Bridgerton. And did the shit hit the fan? Last episode, we ended, we ended with the trifecta of Anthony and Kate announcing to the moms, first, baby on the way, celebrating Colin and Penn's engagement, Eloise saying, you better tell my brother right now or else, Penn, <laughs> panic attack, and then Cressida, gets the brilliant idea to claim Lady Whistledown as her own. I don't blame the girl. She is desperate. She is desperate. So her taking the shot, I, yeah, okay. How that's gonna pan out. But I don't blame her at all. And then of course we had the first major love scene and it was beautiful and it was epic and it was touching and it was cute and it was everything that we wanted it to be. I only wish she had told Colin about being with Lady Whistledown beforehand, but other than that, it was perfect. And let's do it again. But I'm ready to get to it. I saw this episode was called Romancing Mr. Bridgerton, name of the book. So that tells me that something bad's gonna happen and, and like beans are gonna get spilled and Penelope will have to woo him back. We shall see, but I'm ready to get to it. So I got the big cozy blanket and I have plenty of Prosecco still left because yeah, I know I, hmm, yeah, I don't finish whole bottles by myself in one night, but I hope you have your favorite beverage as well. Share with me what you're drinking. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. Also, you can watch full episode watch along. It is available on Patreon. Would love to see you there. And if you're ready, so am I. So let's get to it. Do we hear bells? Do we hear church bells? It has not been delivered. No one has it. Oh, that's right. She would report to my betrothal. Well, I had hoped she would report to my new dress. <gasps> well, she got betrothed. She got betrothed. Oh, Caressa de Camper, <gasps> that blonde backbiter. I too might turn to write in vicious slander if I were practically an old maid like Miss Cowper. I would cast her out if I were her mama. Oh no. I think she is a genius. I cannot wait for her next issue. Ooh. About what? What was she right about? I will about? not insult the devil by drawing parallels between him and Cressida Cowper. For one is a liar, a fraud, a succubus of the first water. The first water. And the other is not known to this author. Oh, Pen. Pen, Pen. Focus on priority. Colin. You well. I've been worried. How long has she been out? Perhaps you should not be here in case it is catching. <gasps> ben. He wants to kiss her, woman. <gasps> I know there is something you wish to tell me. Not in front of your mother. Not in front of her mother. Whatever it is you are feeling. Because of Cressida Cowper and her insane claims to be whistled on. All the unkindnesses she has written about you and me and our families and then to unmask herself at our engagement party. That's the ultimate insult! <laughs> I shall let you rest. But before I go, I have something for you. I have a ring to put on your ink-stained fingers. <gasps> it's lovely. And yet still only half as beautiful as you. There's all this ink. Have you been writing? Oh, yes, um, letters to, uh, to share our happy news. This, this, this hole is so deep. It is so deep. It is so, is it Marianas? Marianas trench deep. Don't get caught up in the ring. Priorities. I'm surprised Eloise didn't make it right over there and go, what the fuck, Ben? Okay, well, the skies are a little less stormy this opening. I promised Lord Greer a debutante bride, not a gossip writer. Look at those shoulders! He has rescinded his offer of marriage. Truly. This is no occasion to smile. I am sending you to live with your Aunt Jo. Where's Aunt Jo? Where's Aunt Papa, you cannot do that. Aunt Joanna lives in Wales. Precisely. Well, I know my daughter. 
Lady Whistledown is an astute writer. You have many gifts, but cleverness is not amongst them. Oh, that's two clever disses she's received now from people she may... Oh, this is the Queen's men! You are summoned to the palace at the behest of Her Majesty the Queen. We have some news we'd like to share with you, Lady Danbury. We are selling the club. Oh. Is he going to sell it to a secret investor? Or to Marcus? You must draw attention to yourselves. And in the best way possible, by throwing a ball. Well, you're used to entertaining. But if you want to win the game, you must lead it. Otherwise, you will always be on the defensive. I love the blue velvet. I love the blue satin. I love the blue. We do have a way with entertaining. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Lord Anderson? Oh, she has a visitor of her own. Does Violet need a chaperone? But to thank you for such an enjoyable evening. Well, it was quite a night, was it not? Would you like some tea? How are you? Fighting for some tea. Is it too early for tea? I take it you sensed a chilly departure between my sister and me. My sister was the first born. But you were the first boy. A little touch of glitter on the sleeve. Oh, it's delightful. The clothes, the clothes. Mm, the chocolate macaroni The life of leisure. Don't they ever get bored? Just bored. Yeah. What? I like the chocolate ones as well. I have not had but the I have the solution. Oh, they've got company. <laughs> you must interrupt. Oh, I do not believe they will hear me. I have been taken ill of the plague, and you are all doomed by association. Three banana macarons for the one chocolate. Very well. They could be making out right there, and no one's going to notice. Family, John has a small announcement to make on our John. It's John now. We are to marry. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> but yay! Yay! <laughs> You make a beautiful pair. <laughs> we must go to the Modisa day for your dress. <laughs> yeah, you didn't give your brother the same congratulations. Oh God, Penelope. Ah, here it is. Oh wait, no, darn it. I thought it was. Mm. <laughs> Wrong writer. Did you know she was Lady Whistledown? <gasps> Who? Wait. You spoke with Penelope this morning? Yes. She is devastated about Miss Cowper coming forward. Oh, no. We know where this is going. You did not know. We know where this is going. No. Not about Cresta. Hmm. You have been so angry with Whistledown. What will you do? In truth, everything that has happened of late has softened me, I suppose. You mean everything with Penelope? My only concern now is with her well-being and our future together. Perhaps I can make Lady Whistledown go away. You will speak with Miss Carper. With the scribe herself. Who is busy scribing away as we speak. Oh, Eloise, you best hurry. I was going to tell him, but you did not. And when the time came, neither did I. Once I get this issue out, I do still plan to tell him. No. Oh, well. Wow. And if he knew it was you all along writing about me, our family, Marina, if he knew how long I too have kept this secret from him, why tell him? When the better thing is for you to put down your pen. Cressida has done you a favor. Let the column die with her name and no one will ever be the wiser. I have worked too hard for too long. Of all people, I refuse to let Cressida Cowper take credit. It would break my heart. Oh, what a Colin's heart. Someone's got pride. Pride, pride. Lady Whistledown is my name, not hers. Your name is about to be Bridgerton. You had a good run for a while. 
<gasps> it is just gossip. Let it go. Her Majesty will see you now. Her mom came with her. But Dad did not. This is the young lady claiming to be Lady Whistledown. The wig. The wig. I should like to claim my reward, Your Majesty. A measly 5,000 pounds should be nothing to the great Lady Whistledown. Well, how much money has Penelope earned during her time? I claim it so no one else can take what is right for mine. Well, I will give you your reward. <laughs> as soon as you give me your latest issue. With the bounty on my head, my publisher has grown wary. Know thine enemy, Miss Cowper. I know Lady Whistledown as well as I know myself. Does she now? Her greatest strength is that she is an observer. What have you observed in your life other than yourself? Unless you can print a convincing issue, I do not wish to see you in my court again. Printing an issue may be my only chance of winning back the Queen's favor. If you publish and cement your reputation as Whistledown, no one will marry you. Yay! No one will marry me now. Mm hmm We should talk about announcing your betrothal. Uh, as far as the Queen In is In fact, we have discussed this. So just go and get married? I simply think it might be wise to uh, wait until near the end of the season before announcing your intent. I think they plan on getting married tomorrow. We think speaking to the Queen may be the wisest decision. Ooh! Wow. wow. Well, if you think you are up to it. We would like you <laughs> to speak to the Queen. <laughs> Mama, bus. <laughs> I'm thinking yellow ribbons across all of the banisters. No yellow. Gilt flowers covering the carriage from the church. The um, is this fancier than the other girls had? I did not get gilt flowers when I was wed. That's because you were not marrying a man with unlimited funds. Oh, what is this? Is she reading old issues? I'm still not feeling well. You have managed to capture the affections of a man of great name and means. But for now, until you walk down the aisle and settle into this marriage, your duty is to make Mr. Bridgerton feel as if he is the most important person in the world. His dreams, his wishes, at least in the beginning. Thanks, Mom. What about my dreams? Oh, oh, is Penelope having a, a shake in faith? Ladies do not have dreams. They have husbands. Your father could be cruel, a weak man. I chose a match for security, and he could not even provide that. True. True. But he gave me you girls. And my greatest wish has always been for you three to do better than I did. And you have. Your lucky Penelope. Do not take that for granted. Thank you, Mother, for being genuine for the first time. <laughs> mm. Oh, geez, these two. These two! <laughs> it is pleasant sharing a meal with you. Mm. Our first, I believe. And those scones look... Amazing. I'm hosting a dinner party later this week for you and me and my dear friend Paul. <gasps> Paul. Paul. After all, I met your family. It's only fair that you meet those dear to me. I have a feeling Paul is another Benedict. A pleasure to have you out with us. Well, the pleasure is mine. Mm. One of my finest bottles of... God, the Modridges. I cannot have it go into the new proprietor. At this rate, you'll have us wishing close the club every week. Sadly, <laughs> this is the very last bottle. Look. <laughs> Surely the drink is yours to celebrate your last night owning this fine institution. <laughs> I, I refuse your pity drink. I cannot even write a sentence this week. What do you need to write? 
A memoir. I'm writing a manuscript, in fact. <laughs> you at least have a direction for your life. Well, I am floating, purposeless. And are you not the happiest you have ever been? Mm-hmm. Because Anthony's back to take over the business. That the winner of this game is whoever is the most fortunate. No, oh. please do not start saying sentimental things about us. I was going to say I'm the most fortunate amongst us because I have spotted another bottle. <laughs> Mr. Modric's fine club. To the club. To the club. Mm. Mm. To the club. He should have sold it to a silent investor. This is the word of the Lord. <gasps> Who's getting married? Thanks be to God. It was just his I church. published the bans of marriage. Oh. Mr. Colin Bridgerton and Miss Penelope Featherington. Mr. Bridgerton and Miss Featherington shall be married here in three weeks time three weeks time today i also publish the bans for lord charles cho and miss emma kenworthy this is the second time second what happened to the first time why why is this the second time together in holy matrimony ye are to declare Oh, he's making eyes at her at church. Ooh. Lord Cho and Miss Kenworthy shall be married here in two weeks' time. I know there is something you have been meaning to tell me. In fact, there's something I've been meaning to tell you for a very long time. I love you. I've always loved you. But I have loved you since the moment we met. Mm-hmm. Even the years I pretended to be your friend, I was, but I loved you in secret. I loved you even when you were out carousing the world and betting French women. I will spend a lifetime begging your forgiveness for not seeing you sooner. Okay, that was nice. All right, fine. There's a look in his eye. There is a look dancing. in his eye. My future wife. <laughs> the church we will be married <laughs> <laughs> that look, look looked way naughtier than just dancing in the church there's too much time for things to go bad too much time uh, brother <gasps> oh no she's matchmaking May i present lady Keswick. she is matchmaking i have been so eager to meet you <laughs> i'll let the two of you get acquainted <laughs> Your sister tells me you're widowed, like me. <laughs> and Cressida showed up at church. Oh my God, could her shoulders get any wider? Especially when you compare with Eloise, is always so sleek, natural or -er hair. Eloise, I've slipped out. Please do not tell anyone I'm here. She slipped out in that outfit. It is a lonely life living in secret, and you do so enjoy words, reading at least, and perhaps you might like to help me write the column. Cressida, do you not remember what was written about me last year? What you wrote in Whistledown? Mm-hmm. Of course. Mm-hmm. I do not wish to be your collaborator, and I cannot be your friend any longer. Oh, I am sorry. Is this truly about Whistledown? Mm-hmm. It's no wonder Penelope abandoned you. <gasps> All you ever do is talk. <gasps> you are clearly just envious that I've made something of myself. Perhaps I am envious, Whistledown. And after spending a season feeling nearly invisible, I almost understand why one might be driven to write it. Do you? Does she? It is said baby girls steal one's beauty. <laughs> Can you not see it, Mama? They make such a charming couple, do they not? Because three girls stole your beauty, Mama. Well, my does do not matter if Francesca is happy, but they do if the Queen suspects them. She may feel emboldened to oppose their marriage. <gasps> during the bands? During the bands. Would she show up at church? Come here. Oh, my <laughs> dear. <laughs> Wasn't that wonderful? Oh! Francesca wants that for herself. Mm. 
So that's two years worth of whistle downs. I would think there would be more. I'm just wondering what his what his memoir travels will include as he's on the cusp of his marriage. This is looking lovely. What's in the box? That looks oddly suspicious just placed there. Let us plan the greatest wedding Mayfair has ever seen. Mm, but it's music to my ears. Now, for the cake. I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid it's not gonna happen. I'm afraid it's not gonna happen. Ooh, what was, oh, that was my thought earlier. I had a thought earlier. What would have stopped Madame de la Croix claiming the whistled down money by giving some? It's been too long evidence and when you sneak out to write your column I assume you will tell Mr. Bridgerton that is what I have come to tell you I'm letting Miss Cowper take credit for the column Penelope that column's your life's work I cannot continue writing my mama has sent me for some fabric samples for my wedding dress okay Genevieve what do you feel like about this really you know my favorite part about dressmaking is seeing the glow on a woman's face when she puts the dress on. I can't imagine ever giving that feeling up. Oh, Genevieve, what are you doing? I was just ousted from my club. <gasps> I'm pulling her down. <gasps> my lord, she will lose all prospects. Clearly, no man in London will have her now. Oh, oh, Cressida, you've got to write like you've never written before. And why is even her leisure wear so poofy? There is no desk in my room. I'm writing a whistle down. Good. Mm -hmm. 5,000 pounds may not be much to live on, but as a dowry, it may be enough to help lure you a husband from the continent mm. or the countryside. <laughs> we must get back. Read me what you have written. Last night, Dear reader, it is I. <gasps> Gentle reader. Lady Whistledown. Today I bring you much gossip from about the many lands. Near and far, far and wide. Strange and unstrange. Familiar yet not. Oh dear. Mama. I'm frightened. <laughs> so how good of a writer is Mama? Where are you going, Eloise? Oh, the ball. That's right. The Mondrich's ball. If that should be true, then this author would like to show you her teeth. Clever. So you are second son. <laughs> I'm trying my best to fit the Nerdy World reputation. Is Paul a second son? Do you fill your time with any creative pursuits? Or draw? Or yes. Paint? No. I... <gasps> you painted, liar, liar. I shall never forget the first day I saw her, after a performance of Much Ado About Nothing. Mmm. The sexy romp. Let me guess. Did she tell you to be very, very afraid of her? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bridgerton is dry. Oh, Benedict. 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 They will not be dry for very long. What is in this box? There's got to be something in that box. Ooh, and her hair is almost as tall as the Queen's. <laughs> oh, more widows. Bring on more widows. Uh, Mark. Few more friends I should like you to meet. Mm hmm. Thank you, Mama. That Prudence, Prudence is not happy. Mm -hmm. 
Oscar. Are we gonna get a, a chitty chitty bang bang marionette doll moment? Ooh. And they just constructed this in a matter of days. That's lovely, it took up most of the dance floor. Perhaps if we should try to approach the Queen now, in case she departs early. I... I'm terrified of the Queen, darling! We'll speak to Lady Danbury about securing an audience. It is all simply a little chaotic at the moment. But Mama, I, I do not wish to wait. I know, but I do not wish to ruin things for you. <sighs> do you not think our match would cheer her? I am going to look at the very fine wainscoting. In the corner, right over here. The specific corner. Not every attachment must be dramatic and hard fought. What John and I have is easy and I love him, Mama. Even if it is not the love that you want for me. Trust me, you're gonna get enough drama with Colin coming up shortly. I think. Should be. Any moment now. I will go after her. I do not wish to speak to any more eligible widow. I don't want to speak to that eligible widow. You are not the only one who cares for Lady Bridgerton. Must you take everything from me? Oh. Oh. Whatever I have done to deserve this ire, tell me. What I care about is that I had a chance of happiness and you took it from me. Who was she supposed to marry? The night before I was to be married, I very nearly escaped to freedom. Do you think I do not know? that it was you who betrayed me to our father. Oh. Soma. 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 You think you can call me by my born name? Oh, yeah. Wrong. Where are they from? Algeria? A chance of fortune, uh, luck. A chance of luck. Lady Danbury grabbed it and made herself a success. But it wasn't easy. With these two, these two. You not spend much time in society. I cannot imagine what anyone would judge you for. Then Tilly has not told you all of our stories. This man looks like a vampire. He is a vampire. That's his story. He's a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> and the kids are home. The kids are home. Can I ask you a personal question? Yes. Is any of the kind worth asking? The answer is yes. You and Lady Arnold have quite a rapport. Yes. I'm surprised you two have never... Oh, they have. <laughs> Apparently, the wine has made me rather rude. Bored, maybe. The wine has also made you rather charming. Was it only the wine? I should go ensure Tilly has not worked herself up into a frenzy of a dessert. Of course. Now he's confused, poor lad. She dessert. She's on that table. My suspicions are true. Benedict dessert. Hmm. Forgive us. We were just talking about you. In fact. Mm -hmm. Would you perhaps like to join us? I uh ah, I've forgotten. I'm supposed to be somewhere. <laughs> no, forgive me. Oh, but this would not be your first uh I was not gonna say three way, because it's not an orgy, because there's only three of them. However, we've seen Benedict get around. What's gonna go wrong? What's gonna go wrong? What's gonna go wrong? We 
got this my mom back. For a daughter. Can you imagine? Mm. Penelope, don't get jealous. <gasps> Good God. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Have we been building to this the whole season? As Cressida's shoulders just get bigger and bigger and bigger and she takes up more space? Because if so, mwah. But what do we do? Observe. Shall we take our girls and go? Well, I do wish to see what happened. Cressida Kappa I detest, though. This Lady Whistledown, she is a rather clever writer. <gasps> Oh. I've been meaning to tell you. I've been editing my travel diary into a manuscript. I'm still removing some of the more personal messages. Why? What is what I so enjoyed about the part that I read? Those parts are only for you. That's <laughs> just a little twisted. Just a little twisted. How do you so enjoy writing? You do write the very best letters. So you kind of compare the letters she sent him to Whistledown? Your Majesty. Were you invited here tonight? No, Your Majesty. Mm. I simply wanted to give you a gift. Mm. Oh, was it the issue? Is it even the same paper in size and... No. She has returned! Although this is very fantastical. Dearest gentle reader, it is said that there is no rest for the wicked. If that is true, this author must be rather virtuous. I am back and shall return soon enough with a full issue. You may now know my name, but have no doubt I know you even better. All that ink for just a couple of, of, of scribbles. Or well, forever now, Cresta Cowper. And, and, oh, come with me. Is he going to overhear them? I convinced you to let her take Mr. Dan's name, and now she has somehow written something coherent. Not to mention published. Please breathe. Published. She printed some sentences on a piece of paper. As I have been now inviting that viper into my family's home, a viper who now has nearly as much power as the queen. Oh. Oh, Jesus. Eloise. You'll be all right. How? Mm-mm. Because I'm going to publish again. With one issue, I can discredit Cressida. To what end? To what end? Whistledown is power. To what end? The column began because I felt powerless in my own home. I was forced to debut a year early and I had no say in anything. Writing was the only way I felt I could have a voice. I have done plenty of damage with my pen. Let me use it now to do some good. How? God, is Colin hiding under the carriage somehow? Am I even forming full sentences? I don't know. Apologies for the late order. That you'll be paid handsomely for your worst service. Anything for Lady Whistledown? Mmm! Mmm! Oh! Colin. You are Lady Whistledown. So this episode felt way longer than it was. There was lots of, uh, we had the big stretch, Francesca and Kel Martin, stretch. Benedict and Tilly, stretch. And then we had Colin and Penn. Okay, we had a happy engagement period. Okay, cool, because the first two seasons, we did not have a happy engagement period. We had season one, rushed, angsty engagement, no engagement period really with Kate and Anthony. So it was nice to see them enjoy themselves, even though she didn't tell him, I know why, but she didn't tell him. Will we get a happy wedding this season? Because again, Simon and Daphne, not really happy, happy. And we didn't see Kate and Anthony at all. The only wedding we saw <laughs> didn't end. So yeah, this kind of felt like a placeholder until we got the big at the end. 
Colin finding out about Penelope should not be surprised. Cressida. I don't, I wouldn't say I want her to succeed, but I don't want her to fail. I don't want her to be destroyed. Is she not pleasant? Yes, she has her moments, but when you look at her environment, what she grew up in, you see kind of where she's coming from. So I don't want her to come out winning, but I don't want to see her destroyed and Whistledown's gone destroyer. Or will she? Will she? Will she? We don't know what was in that. Maybe she said Cressida's just hoping to better herself any way possibly she can and you can't blame the poor child for not having options of her own, of her own making. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so this means that I need to keep watching because mofos out there are spoiling things online. If I can find the time. But there we go. Episode, I'm going to say two, but it wasn't. Episode six? Okay. Okay. Thank you all for being with me for this adventure. Do not be strangers. Make sure you hit subscribe so you know when the next video drops. And as always, please take care of yourselves. Stretch your body. Go smell some flowers. They're lovely this time of year. And then come back and watch the next video in the queue. So thanks again, y'all. And until next time. <laughs>